Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Real Money, Real Business podcast. I'm Lauren, and today we have Dave on the show, who's selling a display advertising business on the Empire Flippers Marketplace. Hey, Dave, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Good. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. Yeah, very excited to talk to you. This is certainly a very interesting business that you have on your hands here. But before we dive into it and get into the questions, I'm going to give the listeners a brief overview of the business so that they have a better idea of what we're talking about. Okay, sounds good. So as I mentioned, this is a display advertising business. It was created in May 1997, and it's in the gaming niche. The average revenue for the business is $15,831 per month. And it makes an average of $14,744 per month in net profit. The assets included with the business are a primary domain and all site content and files, a secondary domain, as well as Facebook and Twitter social media accounts. For everyone listening, you can visit empireflippers.com forward slash marketplace and search for listing number 67377 to learn more about this business. Or you can unlock this listing to start your due diligence if you're interested in purchasing this asset. So with that out of the way, let's dive into the interesting part of the interview. Dave, can you fill us in on your background in starting and running online businesses? Well, it started out for me as kind of just a passion. Basically, I loved video games as a kid. And as the internet was kind of coming online... I was even getting online back in the days of the BBSs and and kind of just before AOL was taken off and whatnot. And so then when AOL came around, I was just always online and very fascinated with the Internet. So I love video games. I love the Internet. And then I wanted to try to somehow combine those together. And so then I started seeing websites and I see websites posting information on games, especially cheat codes, because I was really into cheat codes back then, especially cheat codes were a really big thing in video games back in the 90s and even into the 2000s. But more recently, they're not as big, but they still exist in some forms. And then there's lots of other stuff that they've added into video games, unlockables and those kinds of things. So that kind of stuff interested me. So I decided that I would start a website and just for the fun of it. And I thought that eventually what I would do once I graduated high school was I would build websites. And after starting the website back in 97, I worked on it for a year and I was about to graduate high school and I was trying to decide what I was going to do from there. And I just decided was I wanted to do a video game website. I wanted to do a better website than any of the other people out there that I knew. And I knew that I could do a much better job than them. And so I had been running it for about a year and then I decided to take it more seriously. And it was a, at first a GeoCities website. And then I moved it over to another hosting company to try to make it a little more legit. It wasn't a .com yet, but it was hosted on SimpleNet. So it had a much shorter URL. But what happened, unfortunately, and was almost the end of my entire business, and it was quite the redemption story for me, was a competitor of mine that wanted to stop me from getting bigger and competing with him, he notified GeoCities when I was switching over URLs and going to a different hosting company. And I was redirecting and sending people from my old GeoCities website over to my new site. He contacted GeoCities and got them to shut down my website because I had technically violated the terms of service by 
sending people over to my website. And so that would obviously kind of, in a way, compete with GeoCities, which doesn't really make any sense. But nonetheless, what he not only did to make matters only worse is that incident by getting my website shut down on GeoCities pretty much completely shut off all the traffic that I was getting to my website. Over the span of a year, I had built up my traffic to about a thousand people a day, which was huge for me in a matter of of a day, it went to about 50 people a day. And I was just devastated. And then, like I said, to make matters only worse, he had actually been able to secure that same URL that was mine on GeoCities. And he put his website as one of the websites to go to. So like the way he was able to get away with it was you can't redirect directly over to another website, but he listed a few other game websites and said, you can go to these different websites and he put his website as the best one. And so people that were going to my website now are seeing his and going over to his. So that was just so frustrating and so devastating in so many ways. And I had a moment at that point in my life that I had two choices to make that I either push ahead and I don't give up or I quit and quitting was not an option for me. And success was the only way like, that was it. I mean, I would rather die than not succeed. And that was it. So from there, I was able to come back much stronger. And in June, basically in early June, 1998, that whole incident happened. By a month later, about July 10th, 1998, I got my website from like 50 visitors to over 10,000 visitors a day. It was just incredible thing that I was able to accomplish and pull off. And from there, it just started to snowball. And I was able to then start to realize like I can actually make some good money from this, from the display advertising. And then from there, I just started to grow the website and I continued to just make sure that I was putting out the best possible content that was better than any of my competitors. And that if I did that, the traffic would continue to grow and people would continue to see that. And that's exactly what happened. And I was able to continue to build that bigger and bigger. And there was many offers over the years to sell my website, but I just always knew I could do more with it if then if I had sold it. So I just continued to work really hard on it and build it. And at different points, I mean, it was like back in, for example, the early 2000s, it was one of the top 250 websites on the entire internet. It was just top three video game website for many, many years. There's so much history behind it as well. But yeah, I guess it's a very long answer. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's such an incredible success story and huge odds that you overcame there with what your competitor did to you. So it's amazing that you've gotten to the point where you are now. You mentioned that you've had various offers to sell over the years. Why have you decided to sell now after all this time? Well, real quick, I wanted to also point out too that just the odds that were get stacked against me in so many different ways. But another way too, that it was just really cool is this is the number one independent video game website of all time. And it's just, it was just the odds of a website like this doing so well against the competition that had such a corporate setting that had hundreds of employees, like my website with just such a small number of people doing work for it. And then me, it was just really incredible what, we were able to accomplish with it and just how big it was able to grow and how much I was able to accomplish with that. So I don't know. I'm just, yeah, really proud with that. And just again, with all the competition that was out there and all the odds of independent site like me that had none of those resources was not in an area that like, you know, I didn't like live in California. I didn't live in the Bay Area or Los Angeles or or New York or, you know, any kind of areas where it would have been a lot easier to set up a workforce to be able to grow and expand and get bigger and do all these things that I wore a ton of hats in the company. I was just able to do so many things and luckily and then find other great people and 
it was really incredible what we were able to do with that. And so, yeah, it's been a really neat journey. And so that kind of leads me into then answering your question here about why now have I decided to sell. And the reason for that, I mean, I guess I always knew there would probably be a point eventually. It just never was the time. But the biggest reason that I'm selling now is just that I've had some health issues and they really got bad about three years ago. And that's when I kind of just had to completely stop the site and focus on my health. And I'd been having health issues for years before that. And I kind of had been able to ignore them and push past them. And finally, there was just no more ignoring them. And I was just basically, I got diagnosed with Crohn's disease. And that was because of a serious hospital stay that I had. And that kind of kicked off the last three years And there's so many stories within that. I mean, literally, I could do (laughs) so many podcasts on just what's happened in the last three years, which is from my health and where that's led me and whatnot. But basically, it's just not allowed me really the ability to continue to do this any longer. And so I don't want to just continue to let the site sit and nothing be done with it at all. Like I would like someone to be able to continue it on in some way. And I think there's a lot of great ways to be able to continue it onward and and do a lot of great things with it. But just it's been sitting for the last few years with no new content added to it. It has such a loyal following and still ranks really well and everything. So there's lots of people still come to it because there's so much great information from over 25 years, but I just haven't been able to add to it. And I want to be able to have someone take it now when it's still, you know, in real good shape, then just letting it sit for many more years and then not having it in a good place and maybe not being able to have it continue even on. So I would like someone to be able to give it some love now and continue it on. And while I move on to a different chapter in my life from everything that's kind of happened over the last few years with my health and everything. So, Yeah, absolutely. I think given how big the site got and all of the success stories and milestones it reached and the challenges it overcame, it would be a shame to just let it fade away. So it's great that someone else can take that over and continue on with that legacy. Exactly. And I think another game site it can incorporate really well into can incorporate just by itself, still someone that want to give it love or again, even can work well into other niches and everything as well. So I think there's yeah a lot of great opportunities. Yeah, certainly. So this site, it's got a 26 year lifespan, which is I think the longest of any site I've certainly ever seen on our marketplace. So I'm sure you hit a lot of milestones and success stories during that time. What are some of the biggest wins that you can think of that come to mind when you look back on your journey with the site? Well, I guess one of the ones that I already said, where basically I thought I was basically down and out when my competitor basically was able to do that to me and get my site shut down and stop all that traffic that I had taken a whole year to build. But I guess I needed that to just come out firing even harder and being able to then in the span of like just like a month or so, get it from like 50 visitors to over 10,000. I mean, that would be one of the top ones. And then another one that comes to mind is just Grand Theft Auto is one of the biggest video games ever. And it has a huge following. And one of the cool things about the video game was it had cheat codes in every one of those games. And so every time a new Grand Theft Auto game would come out, the site would get a huge increase in traffic. And then when Grand Theft Auto V came out, the most recent in the franchise, the site got the most traffic it had ever gotten in a day. And it was getting, I think, close to about 1.5 million visitors a day. So it was just a really cool thing to see that happening. And I'd gotten some really big numbers before, but just nothing that had reached that. So that was really cool when that happened. And... One of the things I guess I'm most proud of, too, is just that there's been so much that's come and gone over the last 26 years, especially website wise, and just to have still been able to have 
made it through all of that and still have had the success that I've had and been able to navigate all that. I'm really happy and proud of that. Yeah, as you should be. I mean, it's a fantastic site that you've built here. Speaking about the traffic that came through from Grand Theft Auto, which leads me into our next section, which is how do you attract traffic to your site? How are these people hearing about your site? One of the ways is just that they've been going to for the last 26 years, because the cool thing is that the site over the last 26 years has received over three quarters of a billion different people. Like even if the same person went to the site every day, the whole time, I mean, there's still just one. Even with that math, it's still over three quarters of a billion different people that have visited it over this 26 years, which is really really awesome in itself too. So there's just so many people that have known about it over the years and that have, I mean, either nostalgia wise, or they still know that for this content that we did post, it's the best content anywhere on the web still that this is, you know, where they still like to go. And so that's one way. And then because it is such good content, people link to it and people still post links to it when they're, still sending people links or they are posting on messy boards or whatnot. So that's basically one of the ways. And then also just the search engines all picking up the content and seeing how much it's linked to and how good of content it is and how long it's been around for. That's a lot of how basically it still gets a lot of traffic and people still go to it a lot. And, and again, people still hold such a high affinity for it because it's been so good to them. I mean, they have such good memories of it for all the good content they've gotten from it and just how many times it's helped them through gains and everything. So that is another way that for someone that has time to put into it is I think kind of a no brainer is trying to monetize the nostalgia factor of the site. Like, I mean, it's one of those sites that a lot of people have a good memory of. And just if you started making t-shirts of the logo, both the old logo and the new logo, it's something that a lot of people have seen and a lot of people would like to have a shirt of. And so just that way alone, you can make, I think, a lot. And, And that's just one of many. So. Yeah, well, let's actually, let's pick up on that. So what do you see as the major opportunities for growth that buyers can tap into once they've taken over the site? Basically, I have one advertiser that I work with for display advertising, and they sell the whole site and that's it. And that's the easiest thing for me because it means I don't really have to do any work at all. But obviously for someone that can put in any time to it, I mean, there's a lot of ways to expand on that. Obviously, maybe potentially having more than just one company that you work with, depending on if that's a better deal. But even if that's not, there's still other ways to monetize that traffic. And obviously, the only way I'm doing is through display advertising. And then, like I said, with the nostalgia factor, just one example, you know, t-shirts, obviously, you could do other apparel and merchandise. But I still think that there's other ways to, you know, use that nostalgia factor as well and make money from it. But I think on top of that, if you start actually putting new content on the website and started adding to that, I think traffic starts going up and you obviously start making more that way. And that obviously can create more opportunities. Social media, that's not monetized whatsoever. So that would be another option. Obviously, just having links on any of the game pages to buy that video game or buy other new games or buy other game related things, any of that kind of stuff. Obviously, if a company buys it and let's just pretend it's another game company that has anything to do with gaming in any way, that's a way to help either drive traffic to your site or sell something of theirs. I guess those are just some that just come off the top of my head. I think, again, when a great site like this that's been around this long is only being monetized one single way, there's so many ways to increase things. I mean, like this is like the bare minimum. Yeah, it definitely sounds like there's a lot of different avenues that a buyer could take the site to grow it, which is, it's great to have those options available. I know you haven't added content to the site for a while now, but when you were adding content, can you walk me through what that content creation process looked like for you? Yeah, for me, mainly, I was adding cheat content, unlockables, hints, tips, tricks, strategy guides, stuff like that. 
And so I would get it from a lot of different sources and I would compile in a lot of different ways. So basically, I would sometimes get sent this information from the game developers or companies themselves. And that would be one way. Sometimes I would have people submitting the stuff. And then also I would go and look throughout the internet, like on message boards, on different people posting about these games and stuff that they found in videos and different things. And I would compile this information, the good information that would be interesting as far as like, you know, first of all, if like a game had cheat codes, I mean, that was obviously a no brainer, but like outside of that, even if it did or didn't, you still wanted to have a lot of other cool stuff with the game. So for example, we'll take Grand Theft Auto being such a popular game that I would go and put all the cheat codes for the game. And there's a ton of them. But outside of that, there were so many other things you could do in the game. And there's so many things you can do in the game that you could easily miss. So the page basically then listed so many other things that you could unlock in the game or do in the game or where something was or what you needed to do to get something or what missions that you needed to complete to unlock a specific vehicle or like even ways that you could like maybe make money really easily in the game. And so sometimes those ways would be through like exploit the game that were kind of intentional and sometimes ways that weren't so intentional, especially in those bigger sandbox games like a Grand Theft Auto. There's just so much to do in those games that there's no way that you're going to be able to know and figure it all out. So for all those people that really wanted to get the most out of those games, they would come to the site to be able to see it all. And there's just a ton of stuff for the Grand Theft Auto game. If you go to the site, you'll see. And so it was just about making sure I had the best possible content and that it was accurate and good and that it was written well and very understandable. So I would write it all. So then I knew that there was no issues with copyright infringement or anything like that. Everything that I would put up there, I would write in my own words and give a very good detailed description. Sometimes I would have to pull from two or three different places or whatever to give a really good description, but because it was so good and accurate, that's why the search engines would send so much traffic to it and people would recommend it so much and people would keep coming back to the site so much. So that's kind of a big part of what I did on the content creation side. And then I had some other freelance writers that would write reviews, previews for games, write news for games, and would write different special features about games and just anything gaming, sometimes even entertainment related. And they would handle that kind of stuff. And then I would handle all the hints, tips, tricks, codes, all that kind of stuff. And strategy guides was another thing we feature, but other people would write those, but we would get their permission and then post them on there. And those strategy guides are just text files mostly because we don't monetize them. So that's why we get permission to use them, but we wouldn't monetize them. So, but then there was some strategy guides that we did have that we paid for and those we do have ads on and all that. So some more of the recent strategy guys we had put up, those were ones we paid for and we do monetize. But everything else outside of the strategy guides that are on those game page and all that, I all wrote personally myself. And again, like I said, it's really good quality content for their sites with their content. They would copy and paste a lot of stuff. They would get sent by people or not really check out if it worked or not and whatnot, or even be able to kind of spot fakes and misinformation. And so because they would do that kind of stuff and people would get really turned off by the fact that a lot of that information was either not very accurate or descriptive or wrong. And so the fact that I had such, again, good quality content that did not contain that kind of stuff and was very descriptive and well-written. That was one of the big factors too of why people really liked the site. Yeah, that's great. I'm sure your passion for these games really shone through in the content as well. So the prime of the site, writing this content regularly, as well as the freelancers contributing, how many hours would you say you were working on the site per week? 
You know, it varied because the thing is, I had to wear a lot of hats. So I had to manage all the advertising stuff. So if there was ever a a campaign that was going up on the site, I was working on getting that up on the site. I was also working with the company that was selling the campaign. So I was having to get it set up on the back end, but I was also having to get it set up on the site. And so there were those things. Then I was having to manage the people that were putting content up on the site and making sure that was good. I was having to manage all the SEO, all the traffic stuff, and then obviously getting all the content up and then all the email stuff, all the companies contacting me about all kinds of different things. And then us trying to get products from companies to do reviews and all that. And then just trying to monetize a site outside of direct advertising because there was a direct advertising side of things. And then there was the remnant side of things. And then trying to find any other ways to monetize the site. So I was doing a ton of different things. So I was spending a lot of time on that, that like that was my kind of life. But then as time started to change and I started to do fewer of those things and kind of slow things down and I was just doing more content related things, I still having to focus on other stuff, but I just kind of slowed things down just in general. The content, it wasn't too bad. I mean, I would say if someone spent, I would say, 10 to 15 hours a week on getting good content up on there, just even writing it themselves or hiring someone to like go post new good content on these games and whatnot, that not a lot would be required. But I mean, if you wanted to make it into something bigger, you could, but it's not a lot would really be required, I feel like, other than just, again, maintaining things, which I don't think would take too much time because I easily did that and a ton of other things. And I put out really great quality content and pretty high quantity for a long time while doing so many other things and traveling. I mean, doing a gazillion other things. So like, yeah, I think if you're efficient, it's not that much work. That's great to hear. The site grew so large and had so much success. So to hear that it wasn't such a time consuming site as well is definitely a big bonus. Yeah, I'll say this too. That even at its height, like, you know, I was making sure to get content up there right away and putting a ton of content up and working really hard on it all the time and had other people working on it and it was doing so well and whatnot. I was still on top of all that, traveling all over the world, doing all kinds of other things outside of that. So it it still gave me the ability to do a ton of other things. Yeah, that's definitely great to hear. Given the site in its current condition where content hasn't been added for a while, what do you think the biggest challenge will be for a buyer taking over the business and trying to get it back up to its peak again? I think just since the site still does so well in the search engines that once new content starts getting added, it will start getting picked up right away. And I don't think it would take very long for the search engines to realize that, okay, new content's being added. Let's start, you know, checking the site more and ranking this higher and starting to pay a lot more attention to it. And I think that eventually, you know, people would start to recognize, oh, wait, the site's starting to be updated again. It might take a few months, but I don't really see it being too long, especially if there was a redesign of the website that really then would make it kind of instant, like, okay, yep, something's changed. And I think that would really get people noticing. So I would think that if someone was putting in a decent amount of effort and redesigning the site and adding a good amount of new good content, that within a few months, I mean, I think things would be back up and going quite well. And again, there's just so many opportunities out there for the advertising because I get so many emails a day about all kinds of different ways. And it just reminded me of one additional way that I think, boom, instantly easy additional money that I haven't taken advantage of is being able to do where you prevent the ad blocking. So basically the ad block recovery, I keep getting message about that a lot too. And that's not something that's being taken advantage of right now where I guess you could do it multiple different ways. I know that there's one where something comes up saying that 
you can't view the site unless you turn off ad blocking. I think there's maybe a pay option or something like that. I mean, that's one way you could also do it where you encourage people to turn off their ad blocker where they don't have to, to access their site. So you could do different ways, but there's nothing on the site right now that if someone goes to the website right now with an ad blocker, they're not going to see ads. And there's not going to be anything that prompts them or tells them that they can't continue to the website if they don't turn off their ad blocker or please support the site and either donate to it or turn off your ad blocker if you want to continue, but still allowing them to. Nothing like that. So that's another way if the new owner wanted to go that way. So Yeah, as you say, there's definitely a lot that the buyer can tap into. And given the strong foundation and authority that the site has, hopefully there shouldn't be too many challenges for them to overcome. If they do run into any difficulties, how much support are you willing to offer them to sort of help them transition into the business? I want to offer whatever support I can, because like I said, my goal, you know, I hope that anyone listening to this by this point can hear the passion in my voice of how much I love this and how much this has meant to me and been such a big part of my life. So I want to see this continue on. So I want to be able to provide help in any way I could to be able to help the next person that takes this on that they're as successful as possible. And maybe they can even take this to a level that I couldn't even, you know, in some way. So I definitely want as much success for the next owner as possible. So I'd like to support them in whatever way I can. Fantastic. Yeah, I think that'll be a huge help given your expertise in not only the site, but the industry as well. When it comes time to sitting down with the buyer and negotiating the sale, would you be open to something like an earnout agreement? Yeah, I would definitely consider that for sure. Okay, perfect. And would you consider a non-compete agreement? Yeah, I'd definitely do that as well. Fantastic. Well, Dave, that leads us into the final question of the interview. With everything that we've spoken about, all of that in mind, if you had to put yourself into the shoes of a buyer, why do you think your business is a business worth buying? I think that, again, there's a ton of history there. I guess anyone that cares about any of that, you know, that's pretty cool in itself. But it's a very good quality website that, like I said, I haven't added anything to over the last three years. And it's still generated a lot of income. People love it. It's a great brand, a great product. The content is great. Oh, that's another way, too that I forgot to also mention out of the way to make money is licensing the content itself because there's so much good content on there that that's another thing that is also an option that I had done in the past and that's a possibility, but I am not doing it right now. But again, there's a lot of great content on there. It's a great site with a great history. Just even if the owner has other websites and they're able to incorporate content on Cheat CC and link back and forth between, that's going to help their websites a lot as well. So that's another way they can generate. So if they have other websites, that's another great way, especially because of the domain rank that that can really help boost them up too. So it's a really great website with a really great history. And I think that, yeah, anyone that takes us on is just going to really enjoy what they get with it and really be happy with, the final product. And just, again, the fact that they get to have a solid business like this, that's been going for 26 years now and has such a following from those years that it's going to be in great hands for so long to come. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as I say, I don't think I've seen a website with such an established history in such a long time. And I think that presents buyers with so many unique opportunities that they can take advantage of that they're not going to find with any other sites. So definitely a great business to look out for. Are there any other details that you'd like to share with our listeners that I might have missed? I don't know. But basically, just kind of continuing on with the last thing I was saying is just if the business has been able to weather everything it's weathered to this point, you know, all the ups, downs, I mean, and all the algorithm changes, all the changes with websites, people's interests, all this stuff, if it's still able to be where it is now, I mean, that should say a lot about how stable of a website it is and how great of an asset this is. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like the business has weathered a lot of storms, but it's become stronger because of that. So that's a wonderful thing. 
Dave, thank you so much for coming onto the show and sharing insights into yourself and your business with us. It's been a truly fascinating conversation and I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Yeah, it was great talking to you and it was yeah, a pleasure to be able to share this with everyone and I hope that this excites a lot of people and I'm excited to meet the next owner of the website. Yeah, I'm sure you're going to have buyers lining up to book some calls with you because it certainly sounds like a very interesting site. All right, everyone, thank you for listening. To learn more and see if this listing has already been sold, head over to empireflippers.com forward slash marketplace and search for listing number 67377. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. Once you've unlocked this listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about this business. So until next time, enjoy your digital journey.